Well, what's the folks welcome to the channel it's Fozzy here and we're doing a custom tactics today and i know it's saturday we normally do these on monday but the game like fully launched yesterday and i think we need to do like a special edition custom tactics for our formation you guys need to be checking out like basically right off the bat because it's, it's a new formation added to the game it's currently overpowered loads of people are talking about it all with their own different ways wanting to play it but i think i figured out what i think is the best setup for it and personnel is key for example we're gonna have some gameplay i played against someone using the exact same formation and i dominated them because i had a better personnel choice so if you enjoyed the video please leave a thumbs up on it it's great appreciate hit that subscribe button from you around here as we made that push to 2000 subscribers Without any further ado, let's jump into the 5-1-2-2 custom tactics for FIFA 23. So right off the bat, I'm going to show you the team, then we're going to discuss personnel, and then we're going to look at tactics. So I've by no means gone out of the way. Like, I've, I've tried to test this with either players I've packed and a couple of players off the market. I'm not using an insane team. I'm using a very reasonable team to give you guys an idea of what you can actually achieve in the game. And it's, it's not you don't need a high meta squad for it, basically. You can you can use a starter squad, a mid-tier squad, and still find success with the system. So you see, we're starting in a 5-2. Two, one. Um, if, if you have any questions, I have had them recently. The, don't worry about the starting formation. What we, it actually matters what we do when we go into custom tactics right now. As I say, I want to discuss the personnel before anything else because a lot of people are making the mistake of playing three normal center midfielders, and you want to avoid this at all costs. Please please don't run three normal center midfielders it, it is just asking for a disaster in this system your back line you, sh you should be running three center backs and two full backs you don't want to risk any of this wingers at the, at the wing back suggestion yet and you don't want to try full back center back please run three normal center backs and then two full backs as your wing backs it'll work the best for you in the midfield you basically need two box to box players one of which is it needs to be a lot more attacking minded and then you want a player who's an actually attacking third player to be one of your center midfielders if you watched the tactics from last year we discussed this quite a lot in the 5-2-1-2 that for one of our center midfielders we actually always wanted to be a player that can be a cam so in this example you want the person who's playing defensive midfielder to just be a box-to-box -box player that is well-rounded for me Pellegrini fits this bill perfectly he's three star four star he's high high he's got 79 pace 77 shooting 83 passing 84 dribbling 74 defending and 78 physical i have an engine on him you can throw a shadow on him but because you've got three center backs and two uh, wing backs you don't need to mess around with having like someone like kante playing here just choose a box to box player pellegrini's 3500 coins and he's one of the best boxes boxes in the game at the minute it's really easy to fill this role. Your right centre midfielder, this is where you can use someone like Bernardo Silva, maybe uh, Bruno Fernandes, a player like this. Um, I, I prefer players like Bernardo Silva for it. Uh, and he's a very unique player, but he is perfect for this role. Essentially, enough defending stats to do your duty as a central midfielder. But with how centre mids are right now in the game, they get forward quite a lot. They pick up a lot of good space. So Bernardo Silva being really, have an absolutely crack dribbling stats and being able to get forward, uh, have good positioning, good finishing is great for this. And then your left centre midfielder, as I say, you want someone that can play cam for this. I've used a mix of Zaniolo and Dybala here. Dybala is better, but I'm running a bit with a bias at the minute. Zaniolo fits into the team for chemistry. So he's there, but that's essential. I, the person we played, you see in the gameplay, with someone else playing a 5 1 2 2, they ran three box to box players here. And essentially, it made it so easy for me defensively because they lack this this creativity and this like attacking flair and the ability to score goals. Um, as then I was able just to take comp complete control of the midfield and have an abundance of attacking opportunities. And that is also due to the tactics that we'll look at now. So I'm not hiding everything. We're going right off the bat. We're playing press on heavy touch with 37 width and 64 depth. If you're still getting used to the game and you don't want to play a press, you can use some balance and you'll still find success. But I'm finding the pressure on heavy touch works really well well for most games there's a slight exception for this which we'll discuss in the second piece of gameplay but for like 90 percent of the games this is fine um either as i say either if you're not happy with the press run balance or maybe make two versions of this one with the press one with the balance and then you can adapt that live in game depending on what to what you need the width is 37 it's similar to last year when you were three center backs you want this between 30 and 40 uh, i want it as high to the 40 as possible just to open up those avenues and channels so i've gone for 37 and then i think you need to have at least 60 depth in this i've gone for 64 just to not be two balls to the walls and um, but still give me enough presence on the pitch for the build-up 
and the attacking style we've got a long ball direct passing it as a combo that worked well last year it's still working well this year especially dribbling is not as strong right now so you're not looking to do any like crazy skill like skill moves abuse from dribbling it needs to be good passing so sending people on the long balls like you've got the strikers you'll see how we set up the wing backs the long ball works really well for that and direct pass and helps to try and sort of tie the team in completely and um, we've gone for 47 width similar to last year i don't want the difference between the defensive width and the offensive width to be any more than like at the max of 10 we've really maxed out this time but you'll see we we need the center mids to spread out a little bit from the defensive midfielder and we need the wing backs to get involved this works well five players on box two corners uh, two free kicks is pretty standard and that's been working an absolute treat as we move on to instructions i actually i didn't change my goalkeeper a lot of people have been playing comes for crosses and sweeper keeper in this case i honestly just forgot to change it this is fully personal preference crosses at the minute are really overpowered so people do have comes for crosses on to try and counter that i've not seen it be that much of an issue especially in this format formation with how defensively solid it is but that's personal preference for your center backs don't change a damn thing. Have them all on default. And I know I didn't touch on the personnel for center backs, but it's kind of self-explanatory. You need PC people that can be on the ball and pass. Banyas doesn't quite fit that. Bremer's a bit sketchy. Akanji's very good. But I will say Banyas and Bremer play very, very well in game. And that's why I have them there. They're just absolute rocks for me in the defense. Um, your full back, oh, sorry, your wing backs in this case, not your full backs. You want them both on join the attack at overlap. Overlap's really key for this. When I initially tested this formation, I had them just on join the attack. And I mean, the reason you want them on overlap is because you've got no wide men at all. Now you've got a defensive midfielder and two central midfielders and two strikers. Having them play on overlap essentially makes them play with joining the attack, makes them play like a right mid and left midfielder, which is really nice. And that's something we've always discussed um, with like the 5 2 1 2 as well last year. Basically, getting these guys forward and make them play like midfielders, but wing backs always work better in game um, for like the formation, how it plays. That's just an EA thing. So that's the best setup there. Our defensive midfielder, who's a very, very key player for the game. And I know I've heard people talking about on PS5, apparently there's a glitch where this what you put on your central defensive midfielder actually applies to applies to your right central midfielder and vice versa i'm on xbox so i'm not 100 percent sure there but that's just something to be aware of if you do notice anything weird in game on playstation but defensive midfielder you want them on stay back cover center and man mark now don't sleep in the man mark thing this is key at the minute this year if you've played a system either against or with a system can players make insane runs if the like i had bernardo silva and dabala playing cam for me in a 4-3-3-4 and their runs were immaculate man they, they got involved more than my striker was they scored more goals but put in a defensive midfielder who's central on man mark can help prevent this i noticed in one of the games when i played a four against a 4-2-3-1 Pellegrini basically marked that cam and took them completely like the central cam and took them completely out of the game it left down a striker for the uh, little person then had two wide cams and a striker against my back line and Pellegrini just absolutely bossed the middle because he was a man mark. So stay back, man mark, cover center. That's the combo you want. As we've discussed, your right central midfielder is kind of like your advanced box to box player who has an ability to score. Bernardo Silva fits this bill amazingly well, as I've discussed already. You don't want to touch a single thing on this. Initially, I had them on get into the box across just to try and force that extra bit of positioning. Uh, but since I adapted the team a little bit and I've had them on fully default, and since I've had them on fully default, I find it works the best. Like, and then finally, the last piece of the puzzle in the midfield is your left central midfielder, and this is the player that I say you want them to basically be a cam. Now, I, I say a cam. You could use a like, Chiesa could play this position. Dybala can play this position. Zaniolo can play it. There's a lot of options here. Even Jal Felix could probably play it because he's got good passing. It's just any attacking third player who has good passing, essentially. At a bit of pace is, is helpful in it too. They want to get forward, get into the box for cross. If you used any of my like 5 2 1 2 tactics last year, you'll know the left central midfielder was key for getting forward and getting involved. And it's the same in this system. I'm going to be changing my team around shortly to get that ballot into this role because I brought him on as a super sub here. And as you see in the gameplay, he made a massive impact. Then finally, the strikers are a little bit more simple. You just run, stay forward on the right hand side, and then on the left hand side, stay central, get in behind, and stay forward. I haven't tested like mixing these around but i can't see it being a big issue i've always preferred my left striker to be the one that's staying forward and sort of staying central and then letting the right guy get in behind so far in the game though so that's all the tactics and the instructions if that's all you need cool thank you very much for watching but we are going to go through two bits of gameplay now just to sort of show what it's like in game and give a bit of analysis okay guys i've gone for a new webcam position just 
to sort of see so you guys can see the controller and what I'm pressing. Let me know if you like this webcam position or not. We can go back to it being on the top right if you guys don't. But obviously, give me the feedback for this. This was a 5 2 1 2 4 0 win. And I'm just going to find the key elements for it and we'll discuss and give a bit of analysis. Just off the bat, I want to give a bit of an idea of the defensive shape that you're going to be seeing. And, and, and this is pretty much here. I've pressed. I pressed with Pellegrini and he's he's obviously left his space but it is a five back you're going to be playing against this and this guy as I say was playing a 5-2-2 two, two, five, one, two, two themselves I'm going to have to get used to that so it's literally just there are two strikers against my five back and this is the only downside of it if you're defending like this and you pull players out which I do a little bit you can get punished against a different system but if someone's playing with just two lone strikers you should be able to have it absolutely covered to say like there's very little passing options for him here he's going to have to work it back uh, we do drag out a little bit this is now his wing back getting involved and obviously this is me attacking but it's a good example for it he tries to play it in and then we just pass it back to the keeper this is the first goal to score so I'm basically just pulling it forward with Trent Arxana he is on like uh, during the attack and overlap as we've discussed this is Zaniolo who I'm going to send on a run uh, lots of little one twos play it back into well Felix and again this is kind of why you want an attacking player in that left center midfield role that's where Zaniolo is playing it's just that ability to actually get forward and you know they'll be impactful in the box like if you have a normal clunky box to box midfielder there they might still have the odd impact but you're not going to be as comfortable getting into the box with them the second goal shows a great involvement with both the defensive midfielder and then the wide players so obviously we've won the ball back here we play it into the striker now this is where i think instead of having three box to box players we, we saw in a previous clip how th this person i'm playing had very little support i actually have a bernardo Silva who wants to get forward and i've got zaniel who also wants to get forward and with the way we're setting it up on the long bond right passing everyone's actively making runs again we've discussed before her wing backs uh, normally it's full backs can't track wing backs that well in this case mario Rui just made it ai has made a fantastic run i did press l1 for it to send him he gets into the box and field scores it, it, it's so easy if you can if you can time a bit of passing and send a wing back on a run you're going to get these opportunities and with how broken crossing is obviously if you do the l2 or, or l yeah, L2 or LT cross with the outside of the foot and loops in. There's lots of ways you can potentially score. Uh, so that, that's, that's, that's a key element of the system. Now, I must say there's very little in regards to like negative aspects from this um, from this game. And that's why I've got a second one for you. This game was, I think, 14 shots made, two for the other guy. We had like almost 70% possession. It was a very dominating game. And I think that was where it became clear to me that you do need the system in the midfield that we've opted for. This is all about the defensive midfielder right now. I will say I, I, I mess around there. I, I just kept running and going for the ball but in this system here he's, he's now thinking okay there's a counter attack you can see in the bottom of the screen you see my three blue dots my, my mouse wheel arrow is going around them now my right wing back and left wing back are really far up and then this just leaves Pellegrini here but he's going to come forward with it and basically I just switched to Pellegrini and just go straight in for it and I win the ball back but look at this immediately I'm the counter attacking I play the ball through to Felix boom we score one thing to note if you're finding that your players are too aggressive like in this case when we lose the ball if i can get to that stage again like obviously it's like a three a three on four still so we're still in control but you can actually turn your left wing back onto con conservative interceptions that's something to consider just if you find you're getting hit a little bit too much on the counters with how much people are floating forward at this point of the game we'd be the changes and brought the ballot on and this is where i've struggled so far i'll be honest getting the ballot involved properly in the games but this is where even if you've got a weaker player playing center mid because on, on the face of it playing dybala at central midfield just doesn't make sense but this is the sort of position he's picking up he's essentially playing as a camp pellegrini's got the ball here this is bernardo silva to the right hand side and this is the ball here we play it into him we do a little sort of bit of skill moves we we bully cooley bally just take a minute to appreciate that dybala has bully cooley bally because i've done a skill move i've held l2 or lt whatever it is on xbox i've shielded it we bullied cooley bally and we score like that is just in seeing that we can do this so i've just sent him on the ball bit of skill moves shield koulibaly put him on the floor and the ball scores that rounded off the game 4-0 and this is where this i just fell in love with the system immediately because it gives a, a very it allows you to build creative teams and play a very unique style of football in fifa now this second game um it was a 7-3 win and it actually was 3-3 for quite some time until i finally sort of broke down and playing the 4-2-3-1 he was able to put a lot of pressure on me that's a lovely little bit of play by felix but essentially i'll, I'll, I'll show a couple of their goals but playing the four two three one basically meant they had a bank of four always against my five men now i'm obviously a man advantage there 
But if they say get a fullback forward, like he's trying to do with Vadkos here, we find ourselves under a bit of pressure sometimes. That's why it took me a little bit of adjustment um, to be defensively stable. Obviously, it's, it's situations like that, I've missed the tackle. He's done me with a skill move and he's scored. I shouldn't have missed the tackle with the centre back. I shouldn't have dragged him out. And that's just something, as I say, if you do drag centre backs a lot, you will find yourself getting punished. But that's more on your style of play than it is the system if you pull off center back out in any formation you're going to be punished again pulling center backs out this is something you can get hit by so i want to showcase it i've always heard of a, a wing back forward uh, mario ruiz coming back trin arzanado is still holding position but i've pulled bremer right here uh got him a better position pulled ibanez out then i actually need mario Rui to cover luckily i moved the goalkeeper i managed to get the save in but if you're going to pull center backs out obviously if you have three center backs and they've got two strikers still stay forward despite having wing backs possibly holding the space you instantly create a two on two where if they send someone on a run with the correct movement they'll be able to punish you for it and this is actually a great example for it. he picks the ball up on a counter attack I, I missed play a little bit with pellegrini here but look i'm just trying to hold it i'm trying to hold it the ai for bremer pulls to the left a gap appears for it and we find ourselves two one down so that like this is literally the only downside i have found off the system so far it's great offensively it's great for control in the midfield if you're clumsy in defense sometimes or if you don't track um the runs that people are being sent on you can be hit from situations like that but again here this is look this is my left wing back instantly getting involved and a little bit of movement from chiesa nice little bit of dribbling actually it's the first time i've been able to pull, pull something like that off in the box uh, and we find ourselves right back into the game and that's just in, to see and how advanced the wing backs are willing to get right now in the game and i love it this game was 3-3 until like the 50th minute or so again mario Rui trying to get forward with him just hoping that i can beat vasquez on pace the cross doesn't quite get in but look we've we've stacked the box here that first game uh, i said there wasn't very many clips because the other person playing a 5-1-2-2 they just had three center midfielders and a normal five back line so they were literally were basically playing two attackers, eight, we'll say, defensive players. But look, we flooded the box here. We have lots of opportunities. We play it into a bang yang, nice little pass, and just there was, there was plenty of options. It was at this point in the game we kind of ran away with it. Uh, this is just an absolutely fantastic goal from Chiesa. I'm going to show a couple of nice goals here. We picked the ball up, and then I just hit, go for it. I think his keeper should be here. The keepers are broken right now. It is what it is. And this is the final goal where I just want to highlight where, like, just because a player is cheaper in the market doesn't mean they're not very valuable. This is Muriel, who came off the bench with no camp style boost, plenty of pace, very agile, outside of the foot goal like that, taking it around the keeper is super, super clean. He has, like, I think, what is it? Let me check. He has two less, like, stats on the card and, like, 30-ish less stats than Abanyang in game. He's two and a half thousand coins. Or sorry, three and three point four thousand coins. And Abanyang's thirty-two thousand coins. Muriel plays better in game. So that, that was just something to sort of highlight. Don't don't just look at a car and be, oh, he's 82 rated, he's only a couple thousand coins, he's not going to have an impact in game. If you need a, a, a cheap, impactful striker, pick up Muriel, and then obviously, I've got a bit of Serie A bias, but Serie A is, not, uh, Serie a is an absolute GM at the minute for picking up extra players. I say Pellegrini's in there, you've got Muriel, Benacer is a fantastic player in this system as well. He could maybe play the defensive midfield role, put Pellegrini into that right central midfield position. But that's everything for today. I know that's going to be a little bit longer of custom tactics video than we normally do, but be, with it being the first one of the game side, i think i thought it was very important we had to actually discuss personnel because it especially in this system it makes a huge huge difference and it is a new formation which means it can take that a little bit you need that extra bit of information to understand and get full grips with it but let me know in the comments down below what you think of this uh if there's any formations in particular that you want to see custom tactics for please let me know and i'll test out for you as much as i possibly can um let me know for this system if it works for you obviously you can let me know in the, in the youtube comments you can tweet me about it or you can join the discord and let me know we do have a custom tactics channel in there all the links are down below but hit that like button if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button if you're new around here guys and thank you very much for watching and we're gonna have another custom tactics video on monday so keep your eyes out for that we'll keep catch you there goodbye